Hi everyone, it's Evangeline here at eTrailer and today we'll be taking a look at our cargo pod cargo carrier kit that comes with the carrier, the lid, as well as the bag here at eTrailer. This is a cargo carrier with a 450 pound weight capacity. It has sidewalls, it has this lid, and it also has a bag. So if you need some extra cargo space in your vehicle, but you also want to make sure that it's a little bit more protected compared to the open cargo carriers, this might be a good kit for you. So we'll take a look in this video to see the different dimensions, the different features to help you decide if you want this kind of cargo carrier or not. The base version of this cargo pod cargo carrier is just the carrier. So that does not include this lid and it does not include this bag. So if you find that these may not be the best fit for you or you don't need them, that's perfectly fine. You can also get these separately to add on to your base carrier. So you have different options there. The lid itself is made of steel with this black finish on top. So over time, this finish will get scratched up, which is okay, that's perfectly normal. It comes with wear and tear, but I personally recommend using a black paint pen just to go over those scratches as they develop. That way you can maintain the corrosion resistance that the finish provides you. So you have these shackles right over here on your lid. This helps secure your cargo carrier, but you can also use your own padlocks on these shackles. The hole itself is 3 8 inches in diameter, so just make sure you have the correct size padlock to use this with. Right underneath is sort of a hinge as well as a stopper. So this is used to clip into the cargo carrier, just like that on that end, and then you use the shackles to secure it on the other walls. When you do have the lid on, I really recommend getting those padlocks just to secure it. That way it doesn't bounce right back off if there's any undue force. But if you don't have those padlocks yet, another thing you can do in the meantime is to use these straps on the cargo bag. If you tie them correctly, that might be helpful with securing that top lid. And when you're ready to take off the lid, if you are using these straps to secure it, just remove or loosen those straps and then lift it off. Now I do recommend putting that hinge on whichever size you prefer it hinging on. So if you want to access it from the front, put the hinge on the back. That way you can lift it up just like that. If you need quick access to your cargo care, if not, take the whole thing off and let's take a closer look at the bag while we have this off. So this cargo bag is technically a perfect fit for this cage, even though it doesn't look like it from the front. Now we do have this zipper securing our top flap. So if we just undo the zipper, it goes almost all the way around. So three fourths of the bag gets opened. So each top corner of your bag will have these straps which go around your cargo carrier. I recommend putting them over this hinge if you don't have the lid attached. If you do have the lid attached, put it through the lid. And if you only use a single knot, it's actually pretty easy just to undo. So you may have to double knot it just to make sure it doesn't come undone while you're on the road. And if you are using the bag, that kind of determines how much you can carry inside of your cargo carrier. The cargo carrier itself is 23 inches wide by 47 inches long. The bag is pretty much the same. The only difference is going to be the height of your bag versus the height of the cargo carrier. So let's take some measurements for that. So for the height of the cargo carrier, measuring from the top of the bottom grid, it measures all the way to the top of the carrier itself, right below where the lid would be. It's about 21 and 3 quarter inches of space. Now the height of the bag itself is a little bit less and it's going to sit at 20 inches tall. The outside of the bag is made of this durable black polyester fabric. On the inside, you do have this thin lining. Now the lining itself feels kind of like vinyl lining, but it is on the thinner side. So for its weather or water resistantness, it may not be able to hold up under a lot of water, but should be slightly resistant. Now the big question is, what can we fit in here? So I have right now some firewood, our cooler, but you can put all kinds of other gear inside of this bag as well as in this cargo carrier. Now if you wanna protect your items, 
this the weatherproofness of this isn't completely water resistant so you would still have to be conscious of the kind of weather you're going through as well as how you insulate or cover your cargo but it is nice to see that this can carry a good amount of stuff as we take our firewood out it is nice to see that even though the wood has some sharp edges i don't see any tears in the fabric even after it's been in here for a while i do see that some of the wood has come off into the bag but that's perfectly fine because it is easy to wash out that bag so all in all pretty good experience for carrying our firewood around you can tell that this bag is made specifically for this cargo carrier because of the way the lining is made so while the top is kind of a bit more flexible, the bottom is sewn to the exact dimensions of our cargo carrier. So that's what really creates that rectangular shape. I kind of wish that they had another strap right over here in the middle because this is drooping down a little bit. So another recommendation from me to you is just to have your lid of your carrier to the side. That helps give you a bit more space when you want to load up the bag. Now my big question is how weather resistant is it really? If it's raining, if we got snow, will it really keep out the moisture? So let's take this out, throw some water and see it in action. We have this outside, we have our holes, we're gonna simulate it in the outside conditions. Especially when you have it on the Jeep, you will want to know if rain will penetrate that bag or if puddles splash up, if the water will come up from the bottom. So just a quick look as we undo our top flap, you can see how we have our firewood as well as our cooler with the shop towel on top. We'll see if that shop towel gets wet. I thought that was a nice little way to see if moisture gets into this bag or not. So we'll close this and then start our water. All right, let's see how it held up. We'll open up these zippers. See the inside. All right, that actually looks really good. Our shop towel isn't wet at all, except for that drop I just dropped on it. Our firewood looks really dry as well. And that was a decent amount of water we threw at it. So it is nice to see that it is weather resistant. While the water does bead up on top of our bag, one thing to note is that the bag itself will be damp after a rain shower, but the vinyl coating or lining underneath is gonna prevent the water from seeping through. So you will still need to dry out your bag after it's gotten wet. So this is the base version of our cargo pod where it still has the side walls, but no lid, no bag. You can still use it as this is. This comes with this cam buckle that goes over the top just to add a little bit of extra, you know, just a tie down point almost for the top of your carrier. Now, I personally really recommend getting this full kit together with the lid as well as the bag, especially the lid because that just holds your sidewalls out and in place. Now with this, just a single strap, it still does the job, but the lid does it a little bit more. So this has a 450 pound weight capacity, but you still need to be conscious of your own hitch capacity. We have this here on our Jeep Wrangler Unlimited, and we're actually using an extension adapter in our hitch because of the spare tire. So because of that, we actually have our actual weight capacity, our tongue weight capacity on our hitch, which means we can't utilize the full 450 pound weight capacity of our cargo carrier. So that is something to keep in mind depending on what kind of vehicle and what kind of hitch you have this on. What I put here is a separate hitch pin as well as clip to secure it because there is no anti rile bolt or hitch pin included with this kit. That will have to be something that you get separately. So make sure you get the one that fits. We have it as a related part for our cargo carrier. It also does not create an anti-rattle effect. So you may also wanna pick up a stabilizer that goes over your hitch as well as over your shank. Now the distance from the center of the hitch pin hole to the closest point of the carrier is only four inches. So that's a lot shorter than most cargo carriers. So something to keep in mind, especially if you do need to get an extension for it to fit your vehicle, remember you do lose that weight capacity. 
So the design for this cargo carrier is that it has a mesh floor and it has side walls which can be folded in. So other cargo carriers have slats, others have this grid feature on their floor as well, but this has mesh which means it's a bit more open. So if you have like say sandy items, you're not using your bag, if you have some snow or water like you just came from the beach, then all that dirt can go straight through the cargo carrier which makes it a lot easier to clean up. Now I do not recommend using that mesh floor as an anchor point just because how easily it flexes. Some good anchor points would be the frames of the cargo carrier. So right over here, that bar there, or around this frame on the bottom. And when you need to store this, make it a bit more compact, put it in your garage, or just access your door real quick, or your hatch depending on your vehicle, you can fold these sidewalls in. So let's go through that process. There are four pins holding in each corner of your cargo carrier sidewall, so just pull those pins out on all four corners. And with those pins released, you can then bring these out to the side. This is also an option for you if you need a bit more clearance for loading your cargo carrier. I know some people who like to open those sidewalls just so that they can lift the whole thing in and they don't have to go over the sidewall. So that's a cool feature as well. To fold it down, you just bring the two side panels down and then you bring the back panel down and finally the top panel folds right in there. Now I don't recommend driving around with it in this compact position just because there is no easy way to secure it and prevent it from bouncing around. But this is still a really good feature because then it's a lot more compact compared to when the walls were folded up. You can now access your hatch, open your door, lower your tailgate. In our case, we have a large spare tire which does have clearance issues with a lot of cargo carriers. But even with this spare tire, we have enough clearance to go past this cargo carrier because of how compact it is. So with it folded down, the actual height of our carrier is now going to be from the bottom of the shank to the top of the carrier, which is that top lid right over there. And it's going to be about five and a quarter inches tall. My final thoughts about our car pod kit here is it is nice to see how everything works together. If you are going to get this enclosed cargo care, I don't see any reason to not also get the bag as well as the lid, especially if you want to keep things enclosed, if you want to protect them a little. You saw how it worked with the water resistantness so our things stayed dry even while it was outside our vehicle. So all in all, you saw the pros, you saw the cons, you saw how it worked. The stability could be improved proofs but as an enclosed cargo cage it does what it does and that was a look here at our cargo pod cargo care kit with the lid the bag as well as our cargo care here at e-trailer